It's opening night of Halloween Horror Nights 31. Spooky time. Spooky time. We got a burning skull here. Ooh, from the Dia de los Muertos booth. We're going on an RIP tour, thanks to Universal. We so, got lots to do, lots to see, so it's going to be a long night. But we're here, we're excited, so let's get going. Here we go, the RIP tour has kicked off. We're going through a sequel to one of our favorite houses, Scarecrow the Reaping. Scarecrow per soil. Yeah, here we go. Yes, we're walking through a barn. Just walked through Scarecrow Cursed Soil. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I like the vibe. And brings first, back lots of memories of Scarecrow the Reaper. First <laughs> use of triggers we've seen in the scare zones this year. Yeah, there are triggers in there. Yep, yep. I like love the atmosphere. I can't wait to go through it when it's like pitch black dark. That's gonna be pretty cool. Yeah, I the think sun. The sun is still uh, just kind peaking. of setting, as you can see. <laughs> it's not completely dark yet, so but we're getting there. But now we're heading to our first house. But yeah. she hasn't told us what it is yet. Suspense. Suspense. Maybe it's bugs. Probably. Maybe. Maybe. So the very first house you guys are going to get to see tonight is Descendants of Destruction. We are in a New York City subway where survivors of an apocalypse, where even the air you breathe is poison, are trying to yeah. eat out the last of their resources. Unfortunately, they are running low. So they have turned from survivors to cannibals to pure animalistic human beings. dark, claustrophobic, just how we like it. Yeah, I was expecting that house to be, uh, for some reason I thought it was going to be progressive. I think they said in the press release or something, it was going to get progressively darker. But the whole house is really dark. Yeah. Uh, but really good, some really impressive set pieces. Once again, it's amazing what they crammed into these tent houses. Uh, but yeah, it was good. I liked it. I liked it. Then the other sprung tent house, Bugs. Eating alive. Bugs eat a lot. 
stuff. Campy 1950s. I mean, that's that's the best way to describe. If you have a phobia of bugs, though, you're not gonna like it because there's so many bugs. Yeah, the bugs are definitely there. There's no understatement of that. But um, I think it's the comedy house. It's definitely the comedy house of the year. Um, I wouldn't let the hype get to you. Um, but definitely, I think you have to have somewhat of a fear of bugs yeah. for this house to really affect you. Yeah. Um, because it is literally going after that fear of bugs uh, throughout the entire house. I mean, we liked it. In both houses, some of the best use of space in the sprung tents we've ever seen. Yeah. It's, it's amazing how, like, I mean, there's a two-story set piece in Descendants of Destruction that yeah. you cannot believe you're in a tent. Yeah, like I said, the tent houses always impress me with what they can get in there. So we're heading. Uh, on I don't to know some, some more back. I, I think the weekend. Yeah, the weekend's over here, so I think we're gonna. And we're probably episode. gonna do Universal Monsters. I, I'm hyped. This is a, I can't believe it so far. So, here <laughs> we go. Good. More stuff. Our next house is the weekend after hours nightmare. We're gonna step into the heartless mind of the weekend as he plans out his album. Do not worry, there are going to be blinding lights all in your eyes. It is too late though, save those tears for that house. Like I said, after hours, the weekend nightmare. Let's do it. You guys ready? Two more houses down the weekend after hours nightmare it was one of my most hyped and it lived up to the hype yeah i have to i, I kind of kept my expectations kind of kind of medium for this house and i was really impressed it's a really good house some of the coolest lighting i've seen in a house the blinding light section is the super bowl uh, halftime show <laughs> it is it's really neat and i got scared twice yeah. which never happens there's a couple of scares in there where they are hidden very well. Yeah. Universal Monsters Legends Collide, a lot of mummy. Yeah, a lot of mummy. Uh, for, uh, I mean, I think I saw a Dracula a couple times. Yeah. So, uh, so some fair amount of Wolfman. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't think the, the, the energy in this house is kind of mum tonight. Yeah. I'll definitely have to revisit <laughs> this house later on in the event. Set design's really cool. I mean, you're in, what a... Pyramid. You're, you're an Egyptian pyramid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tomb or pyramid, something like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's I, not the best out of the monsters' houses of the last few years, at least on based on opening night, but room for improvement. Here we go into Conjure the Dark. Titans, my royal pillager. 
creatures of darkness, be faithful unto me. Let the bloodletting commence! Excellent. All right, friends, we are here at our next house, the Horrors of Blum House. So we're very excited. Like I mentioned, this is the first time we're using the Fast and the Furious Q. Uh, this house is split into two parts. The first, you're going to see the feature film Freaky, which came out in 2020. It's got a, a Freaky Friday twist, if you haven't seen it. Freaky Friday, but with murder, basically. Uh, that second portion of the house is going to feature The Black Phone, which just came out this year. Has anybody seen The Black Phone? Fantastic film. We did a scare zone. The yeah. Be the beginning of Halloween. I thought it was pretty cool. The makeup prosthetics on some of the scare actors there was pretty amazing. I'm running to people here. Yeah, I know. Um, it's dark. <laughs> I keep getting Spirits of the Coven mixed up. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I want to call that scare zone Spirits of the Coven, but it's not. No. Um, no, really good scare zone. There's one really cool moment that happens if you're in that scare zone. Be sure to hang around. Yeah. Where all the scare actors. There is a story moment. Yeah, they, they come together and a cool little moment happens, so be sure to stick around for that. Uh, but yeah, like Barry was saying, really cool prosthetic uh, makeup in that scare zone. A lot of really cool characters. Uh, we're kind of going through the scare zones pretty quick, so yeah. we're heading to New York now. And then we did Horrors of Blumhouse, Freaky, Black Phone. Yeah, this is really cool this year with the Blumhouse house because it's literally two, two mini haunted houses. There's a break right in the middle. You go through Freaky and then you're back out in the Fast and Furious supercharged Q lock Q, and then there's a facade for Black Foam. It's kind of cool. I, I kind of liked it. I liked it. It really neat. You really the way they did Black Foam was really cool because you know most of the movie takes place in the basement. I liked it. I, I thought... Uh, they put a lot of emphasis on him. Which, on, yeah. You know, on the when, grabber. Like you said, when, when a movie takes place in like one room, you're like, how do they do it? They focus on the main villain, the grabber. 